Evening everybody and welcome back. It's been a long break but we're back. Um, I'm Rashid Ahmed and alongside me as always Chris Eaton. How you doing? We've had, um, we've had a long break but we've been very busy. Um, we've been uh, growing the tour. We've been sunning ourselves. Jet skiing. Yeah. We've been on holiday a couple of times. Yeah. Twice exactly. actually since. Yeah, it's a tough life. Yeah. All this, uh, bit of Spain, bit of America. Yeah, it's, that's sort of what happens when you're you know, right up there at the top of the top echelons of the game. The touch tennis. You know. You're not. <laughs> You go and, uh, yeah, but you see, my appearance fees are enough, you know. To ah, of course, yeah, you get a million off, pounds every time you show up. You know, I got asked this recently. Um, someone was saying something, actually, funny enough, of all people, Gary Lowe, he said, there's no way those blokes like Willis and Eaton turn up for nothing. <laughs> what, what do you think? They, who would pay them to turn up? This guy? Really? I mean, if he was someone, you know worthwhile or any know. good yeah or any good <laughs> you know someone like Sean Thornley yeah we pay him you know exactly. someone who can come up with the chosen shots there you go no no I mean we do it for fun yeah we do it because we love it it's the premise of the sport Gary the whole point is it's fun now listen we've got some stuff we're going to be giving away tonight before we start talking about the tennis tour we have a babble app backpack we have a oh I'm going to break my chair doing this I know it we have a babble app touch tennis racket and I'm actually going to go one better than this I'm going to regrip this for you. I'm going to take the base clip off. I'm going to do a demo next week of how to do that for all of you out there who play like, you know, girls with two hands on the racket. Um, but for the guys out there that do do that, I'm going to show you how to take the over replacement grip off using some of your techniques yep. on a new racket that we'll be using for next year as well. Um, and there's also, I've got socks. Oh, we've already got. We've already got people keen. Who have we got here so far? Hello, you're on the Touch Tennis Show. Hello. Hello, who's that? Piercy. Piercy. Piercy's calling yeah. in. Piercy's calling in. He might be up for the gag award of the year, Pierce, because you know you were two <laughs> sets to love up and a breakup against Eaton. And you. <laughs> what can we do for you, sir? Uh, no, it's fine. Call in, boys. There you are. Cool. Are you going to add anything productive to the show or are you just going to call in for the hell of it? <laughs> No, I'll probably uh, answer that question that Rash put on. Um, oh, okay, so you're going to call in about the competition. Right, well, the question was, um, I can't remember actually what the question was. I'm just going to have a look at Facebook quickly. You've actually called in before we've asked the question. That's great work. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's, quality, that's isn't how it? To win, that's how to win competitions right there. Yeah, all right, so let's have a look. ATP, uh, no, it's not ATTP, no, not even the Association of Touch Tennis Professionals. Uh, we've had a few people asking about whether or not the GOAT should appear in America. A lot of people asking that question, actually, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to... Um... Can he conquer America? I think it's possible. I, I think it's possible. J if JLS can conquer America, sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have Uni and Jay got themselves over there? God um, okay, we're back live tonight. The Top Tennis Show is back with a phone in. Lines open and nine. Sign up is free. The Americans, we're back and live. Question. Okay, so, Pierce, the question yeah. was... What was Chris Eaton's highest ranking at tennis? Was it 11, A, 72, B, or has he even been as high up as 4? Long, te long tennis, yeah? I'm sorry, what show are we watching? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the buzzer gone? Where's the buzzer gone? How can I just get rid of this call? I don't know. I, I quite like it. Because what were the options? Four, 11, and like... And 72. Yeah, so he obviously thinks I've got a high 72 in lawn tennis. Yeah, I love Thanks, that. mate. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I think we should give him a t-shirt anyway. Yeah. Well, you can give him one of yours. Somebody get this guy a t-shirt. Yeah, give him one of yours. He can probably put it up on his wall, won't he? <laughs> so, Conan, I think, I think the question is uh, my touch tennis career high. I'd say four. Four? Mm. Okay, well... We're not going to tell you if you want anything or not, because otherwise every caller that comes in after you is going to know that they've got the right answer or the wrong answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to tweet at the end of the show the people that won. So we're going to write this down somewhere. Actually, we don't have any pens here because I live in a house with three daughters that nick everything. So new note. So let's have a look. Pierce answered question 
C. So that's your answer, your final answer. Do you want to ask a friend? Yeah, boy. Yeah, C, four, yeah. Yeah, yeah four. you think, you think, yeah. Mm, yeah, bit doubtful there. Is there, is there any way to find this out? Yeah, have to look at the website. It's on the website. Yeah, Fair pretty enough. simple. Look at the website, look at the official ranking of the player, and you can see where they're at. Now, you don't get to call in twice. This was your last chance. Now, we also want to ask you, I don't know if you know this girl, but she seems to be nominating you for a lot of awards. She's nominated you for Best Player of 2013, which is insane because Roberts wins that. And she's nominating a match you were involved in, but you won for the Gag Award. Her name's Emily something. I'm wondering whether there's some connection there that I'm missing. Yeah, maybe Rash. I might know. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know anything about this, but please tell me you haven't got your girlfriend calling up asking he you has. to get awards. He has. He's oh, actually got his That's a new sunk to depth. That's a new low. That even Essex men should be ashamed of. Yeah. Well, I've got to do it. Do us a favour. Do us a favour. Have it. Shift it. Go on. Send, <laughs> send, us, in, send us in a nomination. Love it. <laughs> Pierce, you really have sunk to depths we thought were unfathomable by normal man. And we're proud of you. We're yeah. proud to have you on the they tour. Are, they are so low, but we have so much respect for you. <laughs> All right, dude. We'll speak to you soon. We'll see you at the next event. Right, Thanks for calling in. Take care, bud. Maybe we should make the questions a bit harder. I think we should. Yeah. But we should definitely give him a t-shirt just for saying he thought you were number four in the world at ATP. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Chris, if he'd ever got to those heights, would talk to people like me? Oh, dear. Well, do you think I'd... Do you think if I got to 72 in the world, I would have retired at 25? <laughs> no, no, that's another valid point, isn't it? Exactly. But talking so. of 72 in the world, somewhere around that mark, I'm imagining your mate Dom Inglot and Piers. Piers must be way above that, right? What's been going on in the tennis in the last couple of weeks? Well, the doubles? tennis world, the tennis world's getting interesting. I guess we should probably probably have a look at, you know, what happened since we were last on air. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's quite interesting that, obviously, when we stopped in August... Uh, we stopped at the just, uh, just, just after the All England about middle of July, didn't we? Yeah, just, so after just, the All just before August. That was obviously August was when uh, August was when Nadal won two Masters and a Slam. Yeah, uh, so that was a pretty efficient, pretty efficient month. So that was when Nadal sort of lit it up. Uh, there wasn't actually that much else on there. Uh, September's quite a big, quite a big month. You know, yeah. you get those tournaments that there's two or three a week, and yeah. you know, it's a big chance. So September and October are big chances for. Sort of other players to win titles. You've got people like Gulbis winning. Uh, where did Gulbis won? Gulbis won in St. Petersburg. Simon, uh, Gilles Simon won in Marseille. You know, those sort of guys. Dimitrov won his first game. Dimitrov won last week, was it last yeah, week? Yeah, week before. Stockholm? Week before. Stockholm. Yeah, Stockholm. I've if played I'm... there. That stuff is bullet fast. Oh, really? Yeah, really fast. Yeah. So he's, you know, that doesn't surprise me too much. He came up against his uh, mentor, although he claims that Sampras is the guy he modelled himself on. Come on. Yeah, Sampras, yeah. Sampras doesn't look that good when he hits the back end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Sampras sort of did this, huh? Yeah, on himself. Exactly. He didn't do the, the yeah, sort of fed swing. So, fed swing. sorry, Dimitrov, I hate to break it to you, but we know your game. Yeah, but I'll tell you what's interesting is uh, it was good to see Djokovic win another Masters series, you know, just to kind of... Shanghai, yeah. Just kind of get himself going a little bit. But you know what always interests me is, uh, and I do, I do hate to say it, but what always interests me is those Russian tournaments. Right. Every single time they're on. Now, I think I can probably just go and get the... St. Petersburg, this one, yeah? Yeah, I'm looking at St. Petersburg now. There was obviously Moscow as well. Oh, I didn't know. Um, So it goes St. Petersburg, then Moscow. So you always look, and this this has always surprised me from the last few years. Every single year, you get a random Russian, Ukrainian, or someone like, someone from that sort of area sort of Eastern European winning it making sort of semis or final and usually just did uh, it was no the, usually won no, Valencia so. yeah usually was something else but this is sort of unknown so right. Stokowski did it two years ago right Ilya Marchenko did it a couple of years ago okay you just think you know this is a bit weird this year a guy called uh, Mikhail Prozizny right semi-finals you know people you you haven't heard of yeah before I mean he's a good player I know who he was here. yeah he's, yeah, he's yeah. a good player but, <laughs> no I um, no idea you know, plan. Yeah. so this was really strange. St. Petersburg was, the semis were Gulbis against Prozizny. Right. A guy called Jarl Sosa against Garcia Lopez. I mean, that's strange for a tour event. That's, and that you, stuff, you, isn't it quick? Uh, it's it's fairly quick, but it's What's, not, it's never sort of ridiculous out what there. What's someone with a name like Geraldo 
or Sosa doing there in the semi-finals. Exactly. Well, normally, normally they throw those throw those surfaces down, so they're quite grippy. Right. So okay. Not, they don't tend to be that quick. Um, so then you've got uh, where's Moscow? Moscow was the week after the Kremlin Cup. Yeah. So Moscow Gasquet won. All right. But again, you look at you know you look at the people who are in the semis. And I bet you someone random made the semis. Oh, there you go. Random Russian in the final. Guy called uh, Kukushkin. I've played him a couple okay. of times. Yeah. Again, What's he like as a player? Decent. Not final of tour event decent, but yeah. decent. Um, so, you know, you just sort of think... Someone went up to his on? opponents and just said, there? would you like to see your wife's head in basket? <laughs> <laughs> if not, you'll lose match tomorrow. But you know, do you know That's what I mean? not a bad it's German sort of... accent, is it? You were meant to be Russian, weren't you? Oh, same thing. Come on. German mafia, <laughs> Russian mafia, it's all the same, isn't it? Yeah, but that's sort of... Uh, it, it, it's a bit weird. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and it's always... Do you think of... they are that patriotic that they light it up at home? Or do you think it's something... No, but that's, the, but that's the thing, though. That's the thing. It would be... I, I, I'd be sort of... It would sit easier with me if it was just Russians. But the but two guys Ukrainian... I mentioned, mentioned before are Ukrainians. Then there was a Polish guy. Prodigini's Polish. Right. You know, obviously Kukushkin's... Uh, Kukushkin actually probably plays for Uzbekistan now. I think he did one of those interesting swap-overs. Yeah. But, you know, that's a bit strange. If it's, the, it Ru- keeps, if it's the Russians, you can happening. get... Yeah. You know, you can't just get I mean, excited and light it up. You, but, when you played places like um, Queens as opposed to Nottingham, yeah. Nottingham was a lower-tier event. It was not the kudos. Did you feel like when you were playing Queens... It, because it was a drive away, because you were able to get there without really having to stay in a hotel. You could just go there from home. Uh, I don't know, like home away from home. Did that that make it easier for you than playing at an American tour event or at Nottingham or Barnstable? It makes it easier. It makes it easier for sure. I mean, I I, I personally preferred it. Yeah. But, you know, there's... They're still playing in... It's playing in England, so you're comfortable no matter what, really. Uh, You do get that extra bit of you know, comfort staying at home, but, right. you know, but it's the sort of thing like, you know, Queens, if I really lit it up, you know, I'd, I'd be really happy with sort of second round, you know, yeah. maybe even third round, because they have a slightly bigger draw there. Wardy made semis though, didn't he? Wardy I mean, made that, semis, yeah. I mean, that again, was, is that an example of someone, you know, being that, at home and just... Yeah, yeah. But then so, again, that, that's also an example of things going your way. I mean, Wardy was playing fantastic that year, but I think he played... He, he must. I think he beat some people like Sam Query, who were a little bit injured, and you know right. things like that. Which you no, know, you're obviously taking nothing away from Wardy. You got yeah. to win those matches. <laughs> you still got to win them, yeah, against I the guy. Do it, but yeah, beating Sam yeah. on one leg was too much to ask of almost yeah. everyone in that. Exactly, and I'm pretty sure that you know Wardy would say the same. You know, he he play, was playing awesome. Things worked out for him, and he took his chance. You know, right? Which is how you got to do it in tennis, and it's massive, massive sort of congrats to him. But it's just a bit. It's a bit strange how it happens every year yeah. in the Russian ones, in both Russian ones, always. Yeah. So I just sort of, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not really insinuating anything, I just think it's really weird. Okay, well look, I mean, if you work for the Russian mafia, and, you know, you drive a Mercedes S-Class, which is, chances are you've got one of those, with a massive boot, you've got someone in the back there, mm-hmm. could you call in and, and let us know if you've been executing ATP players or their families, mm-hmm. or threatening to do so, and that's why he usually keeps winning, or guys like... Stakishkin. Kukushkin. Yeah. Kukushkin, same thing. Um, is making semis and finals. Because for me, it doesn't make any sense either. That is one of those Bermuda Triangle affairs that we're going to have to try and get to the bottom of someday. Yeah. Might not want to dig too hard, though, when we're over there. No. In case no, we ourselves right. want to find so ourselves. I, sort of why I'm not saying anything and I'm not insinuating anything. Yeah. I don't really want to be you know, mailed back here, eh, air freight. No. You know, I'd, I'd like to come back on an aeroplane seat. Exactly. Um, but, but moving moving sort of moving on, we've got... Uh, you know, fantastic things happening in the doubles world with our with our tennis guys. Obviously, Louis K is doing a great job coaching coaching those guys up. Right now, we've got Huey and Inglot are a really really good team. Yes, yeah. they're sort of set. They've been playing most of the year. We've got John Piers and J- uh, Jamie Murray. Uh, isn't Cavade working with Inglot and Cavade's doing a little bit of stuff with them? Okay, yeah. Uh, Diesel James Davidson has, yeah. has done a little bit of stuff with Piers and Johnny uh, Johnny Murray. No, Jamie Murray. Jamie Murray. Jamie okay. Murray and John Piers have been right. playing with each other. Johnny Murray has been playing a bit with, he's been mixed mixed bag, he's been playing with people here and there. Yeah. But right now, those guys, their rankings, tennis? <laughs> their rankings are, you know, you've got Trek Huey's 23 in the world, 
Wow. Yeah, Inglot's down at 29. Still top 30. Wow. Colin Fleming is 27. John Pierce, 28. Jamie Murray, 31. Johnny Mary, 32. So basically, we're just taking over the world in doubles, I mean, aren't we? We are really, really looking good. Then you've got, you know, you have to go a little further down to find the, the other guys, but I think we've got a couple of Skupskis floating around. Yeah, they did. They won a tour event, didn't they? I think they made final. Oh, they made final, okay. So Ken's at 76 in the world. Not bad for a. One know. of the brothers just got out of college, didn't he? Neil's at 91, and he's just he's the one who just got out of college. I never know which one's wall to write on. Because I got them on Facebook randomly. I just stalked them and added them both. They don't know, know me from Adam. Fair enough. But whenever I see them at Wimby or something, if they're playing or with Mel South, I'm just like, oh! Yeah. Hopefully but that's, that's sort it. of, you know, we're, we're doing fantastically well in doubles. And just to put that in perspective, right now, you know, obviously the, uh, the Emirates sort of World Tour final, mm. or the, the World Tour final Emirates do the, do the rankings for, uh, in doubles, they do it as teams, and the obviously top eight teams get in. Number ten team is Piers and Murray, right? And number eleven team is Huey and Inglot. Oh, so those boys are. Did Huey and Inglot lose today, though? Huey and Inglot and Piers and Murray lost that today. Doesn't help, does it? Doesn't help. So they had chances. It looks like they'll probably miss out. I guess it depends what other people do, but you know that's yeah that's tough. That's unlucky because that's that's some some loop to business, I think. But um, the only other thing I quite like to like to say that not many people are aware of is the obviously the World Tour Finals has done so well with the ATP that they're doing it for the Challenger Tour. Yeah. Um, so you've got the top eight Challenger players. Oh, really? All go to Could Sao Evans Paolo. get involved in that? No, no he only made two quite, finals. Hasn't didn't quite he? done well enough. You know, these these guys are winning three tour events, th- three Challenger titles a year. Okay. They're the sort of guys who are in there. You've got Colombian, Ukrainian. Dutch, Italian, Russians, Filippo Valandri is yeah. in there. Um, Gabashvili is in there. You know, a Romanian, a Slovakian, yeah, and good. a Brazilian. Yeah. So uh, those Valandri's guys. Valandri's ridiculous one-handed backhand. Yeah, exactly. Yips on the surf. Ridiculous yeah. one-handed backhand. Was he not? Did he not beat Federer at? I'm going to say he beat Federer at Rome. Randomly, about five, six years ago. Not a clue, but those Italians love playing yeah. in Rome. They play really well in Rome. He Except lifted he up, and that was the year well, that the next day, Federer let go of Tony Roach. Oh, really? Yeah, it was Valandri. I'm pretty certain okay. he lost to Valandri. And the next day, and I think it was, uh, you know, it depends how much psycho babble you want to listen to, but I felt that the weight of the world was on his shoulders because he's a nice guy, and so is Roach, from what I've heard. And he, just the pressure of knowing he was going to have to say to him, look, this isn't working out. Yeah. And then he travelled without yeah. a coach for about three years. Um, and he's now again without a coach. Yeah, without but he coach. played well. He got to the finals of Basel. I mean, for a set and a half, even though he lost the first set and then went on to lose the match, he looked the better player by a long, long way. Um, for the best part of, I'd say, two sets of that match, yeah. he looked like the better player. Yeah, I don't. I don't think um, he's. I don't think he's far off playing. You know, back to playing really good tennis again. Yeah, and um, you know, Nadal's making noises about him maybe winning the Australian and stuff, and Labour saying, "Don't be surprised if he wins it." Yeah, but Nadal, Nadal is unbelievably good at making taking up, all the pressure off himself. Yeah, yeah, he always does that. Yeah, uh, not exactly. back, you know, he's a very good player, and he's yeah, uh, he's if I play very best good, player in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah he had very good forehand, very good backhand, and the my game. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we've got some tweets in actually. We've got um, quickly just go to a couple of them. I want to interrupt what you were saying. Is no, that's fine. Dominic? Um, Dominic Hanek from Germany. Wondering if Touch Tennis will mention the first Germans that ever won a Touch Tennis Tour event. Should we mention it? I guess we've got to. Okay. Mark Kaiser, actually, is probably worth mentioning. We call him Frau Kaiser because he hasn't actually won anything of note. But uh, let's not call him Steffi for a change. And let's actually call him Mark. Um, <laughs> apparently, he's the best volleyer in Touch Tennis. Now, sorry, I, I'm, I am. I just am. I've got 20 majors, that's it, end of story. Have you ever won anything on grass? Until you have, no, you can't speak. But Dominic Inglot, uh, Dominic Inglot, Dominic Hannig mm. and the other guy, Stefan Haddon, they won the doubles beating the Belgians. They cuffed the Belgians in the final at really? the Masters. So we had a big event. It was a massive weekend. We had a social event in Hungary, about 30 people playing. Okay. We had the world record attempt. Now, this is a real shout. That's Brunel, wasn't it? James yeah. Ireland. Played 28 matches, 375 consecutive games, with only two five minute breaks. 10 two hours, five two minute game. five minute breaks. You know, yeah, the longest match. Yeah, he is. We, yeah, that's, don't get that one. Man I really don't. Yeah, exactly. That's um, a good effort. That's a seriously good effort. I did put him in a cage. 
Yeah, I've heard about this. I had no choice. It's all right. It's the right thing to do, wasn't it's it? It's what you do, yeah. It's yeah. what you do best when they're weak, when they're on court for ages. Well, he'd only been on for an hour in my defence. Yeah, and I thought, yeah. well, you know what? It's pretty best that I, I put this man away. And so I, uh, I put him in a bit of a cage and then I found out the next day that he was studying sports psychology. Now, what do you think I should have said to him when I heard that? <laughs> Study harder, mate. <laughs> Hi, uh, you're through to the Touch Tennis Show. Hi, right, James Ireland. James, James Ireland. Ireland. <laughs> speak, speak of the devil. Hey. Taking a break from the studying. Yeah. <laughs> you need to study harder, as Chris said. <laughs> um, I thought I, it wasn't two five-minute breaks. It was like two ten-minute breaks or something. Just oh, to correct you. Why are you calling in then? Why isn't Sarah <laughs> calling in on your behalf? <laughs> <laughs> no, good work, mate. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah, she, she's a dick. Uh, we're going to pretend we can bleep that because we don't have profanity on the show. Or did you think that my name was Richard, hence you uh, shortened it? I thought it was after 9 o'clock at the watershed. No, no, no. We don't allow profanity on the Touch Tennis site. You should know better than uh, that. You're a disgrace to the sport. You know, does Sara know that you speak like that? No, she doesn't. Yeah, good. I'm going to send her a text telling her. You're wondering how I got her <laughs> number, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, are you calling in to win the competition? Uh, yeah, I already tweeted it, but I'll answer it as well. Oh, good. That was really helpful. Tweet in your answers so yeah. the whole world knows what it is. Great. Now, did Chris <laughs> Eaton, in touch tennis, reach A, 71, B, 11, or C, highest ranking 4? What do you think in the touch, answer is? Touch tennis, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, did you... Was, uh, four. It was four, in your opinion. Is that your final yeah. answer? Lots of people think yeah. I'm quite good at this game. Don't yeah, they? a lot of people think you're quite handy at touch tennis. They not, have they not seen me cuffing you at this? Probably not, because no. I think it's happened. <laughs> okay, now, at the end of the show, we're going to read out the winners. We're not going to tell you whether you got it right or not, because... But James is going to be too busy studying. Yeah, hopefully, because he's got a long way to yeah. catch up after what I, I did to him. Yeah. yeah, sports psychology needs to improve massively. Surely psychology 101 is don't listen to the guy that's dirtball in your mind. <laughs> I mean... Uh, I need to watch that video back and see what actually happens, see everyone's faces. Yeah, and look at the winks I'm giving Seabrook, knowing that I've got you in a cage. I'm just holding that... Like five games later to realise we're joking. Yeah. <laughs> It was during the very first time I said it, I looked at Seabrook and went, yeah, I got it. Uh, I knew you were gone. That's a beautiful I feeling. Thought, I thought the whole thing was absolutely ruined because of Sean couldn't measure out three metres. Yeah, well, you know, it's a lot longer than he's used to measuring out, dude. Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> By a factor of 30. Anyway, thanks for calling in, mate. We'll let you know at the end of the show. Stay tuned to see whether or not you won. You, All the mate. best. All right, bye. Study harder. That's brilliant. But yeah, I should have said that to him. Instead, I just laughed. Really, <laughs> Tommy, because works just as well. Yeah, I mean, there might have been a little fist pump and a little justice. There you go. So, yeah. what was that world record attempt? The world record attempt. Um, the Guinness World Book, uh, Book of Records. They ask you to, um, you know, you have to set a reasonable target. Now, touch tennis wasn't on their radar until James actually got in touch with them. So, I'm really proud of him for doing that. And it took him six months to get an answer from them. Wow. It's not a quick process. No. Um, I remember when Sam Richardson did this for Big Change, his charitable trust with Mike Weisner. Um, you should look that up, Big Change, by the way, if you're bored. It's a, it's a great charity. Um, but um, they, they said, well, no one's ever done this before, so 25. They obviously did the same with touch tennis. They said 25 matches. So he booked a court at Brunel. We took the cage down there, laid it out. Um, well, he laid it out. We couldn't be bothered to help him up. I was tired. Um, had a coffee to drink, you know, busy. Um, and, um, and he played, 28 instead. Um, his girlfriend Sarah was there, Riyadh was there filming, there was uh, Zach Crookshank came along, Elliot Seabrook, Sean Watson went and helped as well. Uh, Dan Bourne was there, the pump. Cool. Um, <clears throat> trying to serve absolute rockets. I've never seen anyone try and serve so hard indoors. Good for him. Uh, I mean, this is valid for tennis as well as touch tennis. If you're on a fast surface, let the surface do the work. You don't need to serve harder because you're on a bullet quick surface. You just need to serve your normal serve. It will travel faster. Psychologically, what you're thinking is the ball's coming, God, this guy's serving rockets today. No, he's not. He's probably just serving normally, but you think it's a rocket because of the surface. 
You don't need to do any more, and that's when you make mistakes. Just serve your normal serve, and it will go through like a bullet. Right. Seabrook, that goes for you especially. Um, Mr. Plays fast, fast, and faster. That's, you know, that's his three paces. Um, now, we've had a few more tweets. I'm going to quickly uh, rush to a couple of those. I had a question from somebody, and I want to go back to this guy. Um, before I do, quick mention, Skoda, Gant Skoda. There is a tournament in Hungary okay. uh, taking place this month. We had the US Open on Sunday, which Jared Smith won. Um, and we've got a tournament in, um, in Hungary in a couple of weeks. So Skoda oh, nice. behind that. Wow. So uh, unfortunately, they're not giving us a free car yet, but hopefully next year they will. That'd Some be an point. awesome one. Yeah. Now, I've got a couple of things here live. Blah, blah, blah. Gary Lowe. I do not talk like that, you fool. <laughs> I think he does. Um, <laughs> uh, what else have we had tweet-wise? Answer the question. Oh, James Ireland tweeted it. You should be studying, mate. You really should. Um, let's just have a quick look and see what other tweets have come in about the um, show. Yeah, that was it. This was one we had earlier on from... Um, my brain's gone blank. Sorry about this. Uh, the guy is here. He is Martin Collins. Um, and he said that, um, this is not boring for you, but I've wondered how you were able to la launch a new form of tennis for adults and what was the impetus behind it? Well, the best way to explain that is Joe Mainland and uh, Dan van der Molen, um, really nice couple of guys. They produced a piece about type tennis. It was about a year ago. But this does a better job of explaining uh, the ethos behind it and what it's about than I can. So I want you to have a quick watch of this. We'll come back and we'll answer. Um, we'll let everyone know who won and who didn't. Look familiar? This is tennis with a twist. Born in 2002, this shorter form of the game is proving ever popular with beginners, club players and even professionals. With four games enough to win you a set and two sets the target to win a match, people are finding a new love for tennis. Smaller courts and smaller rackets mean the rallies go on far longer. Rashid Ahmad invented the concept in his own back garden and he explains why the game is so popular. It really is addictive and the, the format we have of competition means that more so than any other sport, it levels out the playing field by having only one serve. Um, you know, it means that these bigger servers have to be more cautious. Um, if you get a professional tennis player whose movement is incredibly good on a big court, slightly different movement on a smaller court where he's got to take lesser footsteps. So it balances itself out and they keep coming back for more. With line calls so crucial to the game, touch tennis relies on a bit of help from the crowd. Well, that's great because, I mean, you'd never see that in a normal tennis tournament. Um, and I think there's some things that tennis could benefit from um, adopting that we have in our game, which is just good spirits. <laughs> Touch tennis's growing popularity has even enticed professional players into its ranks. Britain's seventh-ranked professional Emily Webberley-Smith combines the two and sits second in the women's touch tennis rankings. Webberley Smith believes the competitive nature of touch tennis helps her professional game. There was an interesting situation a few months ago where I played a lot of um, touch tennis matches on the Sunday, which is normally my day off. Um, and I had one of the best practices I've ever had on the tennis court the following day. <laughs> with amateur players rubbing shoulders with professionals, why is touch tennis capturing people's imaginations? I think. The, the power element's taken away, um, therefore that's why um, non-pros can play you know, straight away um, with people who do it for their living like I do. But it's more the game just entices you in to be able to, to work the point a little bit easier. Tennis sometimes, you know, it, it's a bit repetitive and, and people miss balls and it, you, can't, you haven't got the consistency. Um, but with touch tennis you can learn to play and hopefully get a bit fitter while you're doing it. Almost a thousand people played the sports and with tournaments spanning from the UK to Australia, it may not be long until touch tennis captures a worldwide audience. In an ideal world, I'd like to see every driveway and every garden with a mini net and sponge balls and parents playing with their children, brothers, sisters and sisters playing one another, um, and schools, uh, colleges, universities, badminton halls all around the world. Ahmad has big plans, but for now, he's concentrating on each point. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, Miguel, and uh, I hope you got some insight into the sport. Uh, the basic premise or the impetus behind it was that I just wanted to uh, 
beat people that were better than me at tennis, which was pretty much the entire planet. Um, so I came up with some rules and a format of the game that would engage people, and it just grew from there. I mean, it's just been that simple. People, yeah, it's fantastic. It's just that, that little leveler, isn't it? Yeah, gives me a chance to win points off Chris. I mean, let's you know, if you, you need to watch me play tennis. Someone said it wouldn't be a bad idea to put a video up of that, of me actually playing lawn tennis to see how bad I am. It would be a bad idea, though. Yeah. You'd lose all any respect anybody ever has for you. Yeah. At the I've moment, seen it, sadly. Yeah, a lot of people at the moment think, man, you must be all right at tennis. I'm like, yeah, you keep thinking that. I love that <laughs> thought. Um, and Gary Lowe hasn't come up with anything. Um, and James Ireland has said, my God, you have aged badly. Aged badly. I'm like, well, Since I'm... last time he saw you, last week. Um, yeah, I don't know why he's... Um, Had a rough week. Maybe maybe that was his girlfriend tweeting him. Hello? Hello, is that Rash? Hey, no, you've called into the Touch Tennis Show. Rash and Eaton, who is this? This is Luke in Bulgaria. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Watching live from the hotel as well. How's this? Yeah, that, that, I'm taking it international, right? I'm taking it Luke, hold on. I'm just telling off my daughter. <laughs> Carmen, bugger off. Come back later. <laughs> How do I live without you? I want to know. Isn't that, is that, Amazing. is that Michael Bolton? Pass. Like I can hardly believe it. Well, I've heard yeah, the like news Michael today. Bolton, it's brought music to like the masses. You're and calling from. Everyone's enjoy it. It's sold out. You're playing at all these venues around the world. And it's steady. It's pure music. Mike, this is the guy that has bought tickets to Shania Twain and Michael Bolton. Is it Shania Twain? What's her name? Uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> wow. You're a lot of spicy public, right? I bet. I bet your boyfriend loved those pres- for those presents. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get. I didn't really ask him to be sorted. a news guy. Come on. <laughs> Christmas and Valentine's sorted. <laughs> Uh, oh, you just got owned by like Chris. <laughs> Do you realise the level you have to go to for Chris to say something like that? I mean, it's normally me, but God, I'm, I'm just smoking it out. I'm blanking it. <laughs> and you're and you're at the WTA watching women's tennis. I'm at the WTA watching women's tennis. Watch straight. Um, Simone Halep, Abanovic, and uh, Kiwanenko. Okay. Nice. Okay. It's good, it's good, but it's empty, it's unreal. I can't believe I empty is it. What, devoid of any other men, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, it's enough for that stuff, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think the WTA is struggling. I'm just getting rid of the Bulgarians, look at me, you're really awkwardly. Yeah. Are they struggling at the moment, you think? Yeah, from what from what sort of, from what I've heard, the WTA are struggling. They're trying to put a lot of their events combined with men's events so that they get that oh it shows you know, today it shows they yeah, need that it. sort of you know that that sort of connection that, yeah you know they need they need extra fan base because unfortunately women's tennis is struggling to sell itself at the moment yeah so especially the budget ticket prices today are 40 I think it's like 40 euros a week up and that includes every night in the finals as well wow that's how cheap it is and they can't even sell it out that's unbelievable not even not even I think it's about 15% there today in the whole category I mean, we charge more than that for a touch tennis event. Yeah. Why, why, that's what I said. There's a better atmosphere at a touch tennis event. What do you, so why did you go there? Please tell me it was for a holiday rather than to actually watch the tennis. I'm not going to lie. It was for the tennis. Wow. Right, so we're going to get on with the questions because we need to end the show. We don't want to have you on our air anymore. Um, it's, it's, it's unbearable. Four. You, I'm, going for, I'm going for it. Four. I'm saying it straight out. It's four. Four. Okay. So is that real touch tennis, tennis or touch tennis? Touch tennis. Okay. I'm not getting big abuse for that either. <laughs> uh, we just hung up on him. You know why? Because we can't have someone that listens to Michael Bolton on the show. Is that? I mean, the, the fact that he just rang up. I could hardly believe it. <laughs> is that the one that? Um, the guy with the. He's got. He's got I don't. I've, I've never listened to his music, okay. but I'm he's pretty got sure. A mullet and a short hair at the front. He's not calling in again, is he? No, this is someone calling from Belgium. Hello? Hello, you're through to the Touch Tennis Show? Hello? Wait. Hello? Um, hello? Hi. Can you hear yeah, can you hear me? Oh, wow. Completely 
with a massive delay, but yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, that's better. Uh, this is Miguel. Um, I told you earlier and that. Thanks yeah. for the video. Hey, that's all and, right, Miguel. Um, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. If you um, if you turn your laptop off, you'll be able to hear us fine. Hello. Right, this must be awkward. Right, hi. Yeah. Um, no, just calling in to say hi and uh, submit my answer to the um, critique and ranking. Are you That's a registered point. player on the touch tennis site? Sorry? Are you registered on the touch tennis site? Yeah, I am. Ooh, that was a close one. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from home, from the cell phone. Which country we mean? Oh, because it's come up with a Spanish number. Yeah, it's come up with a really weird number. That's oh, shit. Right, it, it is a Spanish number. Yeah, uh, what's your language, mate? Uh, I thought I'd got my proper SIM card in. My no English problem. One. All right, so what's your answer? We won't keep you long. Quickly tell us your answer. Um, for the fourth rank. Okay, good answer, mate. Apparently he was that good. That's a good answer, mate. Okay. You, uh, We are going to send you a Touch Tennis T-shirt. And you, along with the other three callers, have won. I'm going to let you get off the phone now. We've got your address on the site, and I'll send this off to you on the weekend. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. No problem. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, work, uh, if anyone's there. I'll see you there, mate. See All you. the best. Bye. Well, Miguel, thanks a lot for calling in, and thanks to anyone else that called in. We're not going to take any more calls, um, simply because it's that time of day. I mean, and we would probably end up, you know, just abusing you. And um, I need to actually go and put my kids to bed, because my wife's out. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm gonna feeling a bit like Luke Mays at the moment. Because it does smell like at least half of this house is burning right now. So yeah, that's yeah, about well, right. You your know. loss. Well, you know, it's 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 interesting because you know we had Luke on the phone, and I'm now gonna you know put my kids to bed. I get I get to live in his shoes. You know, I know what it's like to be a house husband or a, you know a home wife or whatever they call it. You know, <laughs> I've got that feeling right now. I've got oh, that loving yeah, feeling. Yeah. <laughs> It's another one of those Michael Bolton tracks if you missed the connection there. Thank you very much for everyone that tuned in. We um, are really happy to be back. Um, the winners of today were James, uh, Matt Pierce, Luke Mays. Uh, well, I don't think I can ever call him a winner if he's at the WTA, but um, in Bulgaria, of all yeah. things. Do we I mean, still have like pink rackets? And we could yes. Get them? I've got a pink racket. I'll tell you what we could do. Yeah. We could just cut the sleeves and crop one of those T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> should, we, should we give him a little tank top job like yeah. that? We'll oh. give him two. He can, he can sort out his husband's uh, <laughs> Christmas present as well. <laughs> oh, well, listen, mate, I hope the wedding goes well for you, and uh, that's probably why you've gone over to Bulgaria. Um, but uh, uh, anyone else that tuned in and watched, thank you very much. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to tweet us in during the week. We'll be back next Tuesday for another show, and we will have the awards at the end of the month for the year. Now, if you've got your nominations, please send them in. Um, once again, thank you very much for tuning in. For myself, Rashid Ahmed. Me, Chris Eaton. Take care, guys.